Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. A couple of days ago, one of my YouTube members hit me with a request for a general strategic guide on getting into solo self-found gameplay, asking for whatever tips and tricks, strategies I might have. So I spent a couple days like taking down some notes and putting some stuff together so that I can do what I can to make a guide with whatever knowledge I can throw out here. Now, I have also played Path of Exile for over 20,000 hours. There's a lot of things that it might go over my head that might be useful to newer players. Like, I, I'm very far from a new player of this game. So, I gathered some information, but first, I want to just talk about my general experience from when I went from mainly focusing on playing Trade League and then going into Solo Cell Found. So, when I played in Trade league i would do all of this prep before a league would start i'd have my build i would have practice leveling and i would have a focus for when i got to maps what i would target to make as much currency as possible to upgrade my build and i would do things like i get to maps and i do nothing but farm abyss and i sell stygian vises and that is it that's what I do for days is just that one little bit of content. And if I need a watcher's eye for my build, I buy it. If I need oils for an anointment, I buy it. If I need a timeless jewel, I buy it. Any other gear I need, I just buy it. And I just continually doing the same thing. And then at the end of it, I will have a character better than I could ever create in Solo Cell Found because I've just farmed all this currency and just purchased all the gear from other players. Now, when I went into Solo Cell Found, that whole mindset changed a lot because every little thing that I needed, I had to go get and farm myself. If I wanted catalysts to get extra attributes on an astramentist, I have to go farm metamorphs and get those catalysts myself. So it started to make everything feel way more rewarding to me. Something I was not expecting though was like when these first couple of uniques you get drop on the ground on a league start instead of me looking at that item, hitting a button for my trade macro, seeing how much that item is worth and deciding whether it is garbage or not. Instead, I look at that item and think, hmm, I wonder what this item can be used for. And I start to build up these items and start to look for synergies across things and started creating my own unique builds based on the things that I was finding. And so the character I picked to league start didn't matter as much because regardless, I want to then go in and make a second character based on the good items I find that might point me into a direction for a second character that might be better than I could get on the initial character, which started me doing the wheel spin on just random builds for going into solo self found and just seeing where things go. And it has been a lot of fun. And it's been a lot more rewarding to me as a player um, of being able to achieve like new thresholds and getting these boss kills, like getting a watcher's eye and these boss drops and things. It, it's really exciting and can open up new opportunities for your playthrough in a league. Now, Solo Cell Found is definitely not for everybody. I know several players that love the idea of Solo Cell Found, but in the current cycle of the game that we have with a new league and a reset every few months, they don't have the time to put into playing solo self-found. They might only get to make one build a league, one character, and they try out the new content and that's about it. So I would say solo self-found is much more of a time investment in playing Path of Exile than playing in Trade League is because you can you can definitely access everything you need to make a certain build and even builds that are much much harder to achieve in solo self found by playing in Trade League. So there is definitely a spot for players in either league and as with every Path of Exile league you have to go into it and set a goal for yourself. Uh, I think that is one of the most important things with approaching Path of Exile leagues. So I have lots of time to spend, right? Uh, last league, I, all, I played Diablo 4 for a month and I still put out 60 videos 
on my journey through Solo Cell Found. So I have lots of time to commit to this and I can do a lot of things. I wound up making eight Solo Cell Found characters in that process. And last league, my goal was to try and farm a Lionized Glare bow in Solo Cell Found. I tried very hard. It was the focus of the entire league and I did not do it. The goal for this league is to try and farm an Echo Forge off of Maven or Uber Maven if it only drops there. That That is my goal going into this league. And I right now don't know what I'm going to league start in like 13, 14 hours from when I'm recording this. So I, I already know going in, it's going to be a long journey. I don't even know what characters the game and the RNG of drops is going to give me and allow me to play. So you kind of have to be willing to improvise and experience experiment and try different things in solo self found and to me it's it's a lot of fun and it is it prolongs my enjoyment of playing each league by playing in solo self found now shortly after i was asked to make this video another user showed up in my discord by the name of psionic angel with a guide that they made on solo cell found now i'm going to link this document in the video description there's a lot of good information in here and a lot of things that i might not dive into myself because there's this is very well formatted very well done definitely worth a read if you're looking to get into solo cell found but i've made some notes i'm going to go through things as it appeared to me to go through them and i guess the first thing i want to go into is like when you get to maps so looking at atlas passive tree here like this is all filled out from a completed league but my general approach when i'm getting to maps is i need veiled items i need to unveil things so my first four points are absolutely push up and get covert stakeouts okay now another thing to consider here is that any league content you want to do or like target farm anything say you want a ritual base or you want to go after blight oils or delirium any content of that type you are going to be inefficient at unless you can invest in all of the passives so at first you probably want to focus more on getting your atlas completed to get you the atlas passive points to invest in you probably don't want to start blocking mechanics that might give you valuable things for your character such as blight giving you oils or metamorph or heist which is very important i'll touch on that later but i tend to focus uh, a little bit different i try and focus not on the league content i want to leave every content available open to me so that i can just start grabbing things and slowly accumulating all the different things at once as i push forward and the big thing i focus on is going after a six link and getting through maps quickly so my atlas passive tree off the start is going to grab covert stakeouts I'm going to get shrines. I'm going to push to the left through all of these Kirak nodes and grab commissioned officer. So I'm going to get a lot of Kirak missions and extra scouting reports. Then I'm going to push up and grab secret operatives. Strong boxes can just naturally spawn in the map. And this is going to allow me to start banking scarabs. And I'm also going to grab tamper proof so that strong boxes are corrupted. And then I'm going to come up here and get more buffs for my shrines so I can complete maps faster so those are the main things that i'm like i'm going for that right off the league start and then i'll probably grab this additional strong box and that's what i'm doing as as i then try and branch out and push to things i might be more interested in if i want to start targeting abyss or harvest or any of the endless possibilities that there are in the game. So Kirak is really important for getting these early map completions because every time you run a Kirak mission, his inventory will reset and then you can purchase maps, which you might need currency for. But another thing to consider is you want to probably start banking up lower tier Kirak missions. And this is a fun little tip that I whenever i'm using scouting reports so let's say i want to use my singular scouting reports i'm trying to target unique maps i will not use these scouting reports unless i have an available white map atlas mission yellow atlas mission and red atlas mission so i have all of those so that when i use this scouting report i get a unique map that's a red tier 
I get a unique map that is tier 10, and I get a unique map that is tier 5. Now, if I only am trying to run the highest tier content, okay, there's an Obus here. I might be able to get some high level base items out of there, but I, I didn't get the map that I was needing, but I can go run this Malcoon, get a bunch of extra currency out of that. And so doing this, I get three unique maps for one from the scouting report. So then as you're completing your Atlas, you might start to get into other things. At the end, you definitely need to be farming all of the boss maps with vivid memories, uh, Shaper Elder Guardians, Remnants of the Past, Conquerors. You're gonna need these things. But at the same time, you are going to have a good chance of being able to get them from Kirak missions as well. Every single time you run a map in here, his inventory will refresh. You check in here. You can sometimes get offered those maps. And sometimes he will offer you those maps as well. So if you run out of your red tier maps, you, you can't... You don't have any more chances at getting those boss maps. So you can run a lower tier map to preserve your red tier Kirak missions and try and use those. You can even use the most basic scouting reports. See if I can pull it off here. Sometimes like this is a shaper influenced map, but I didn't get any of the bosses here. This was just a normal scouting report. There's corrupted maps in here, all kinds of stuff. So you can use your other scouting reports, not just the influence ones, to try and use your red missions to their maximum effect. And then if you didn't get what you need, rather than using another scouting report, you can look through here for something like this map, find the unique item. But another really big thing to look for across these world maps is like this armory that says find the stack of divination cards if i run in there like there's going to be divination card that drops in a full stack and if you can find one of those on a map that you know drops a divination card that can give you a six link that could be your ticket to your first six link of the league so that's why i go really hard on kirak focus at first but i want extra june missions so that i can get my veiled items and then i can stop worrying about veiled items so for june like i guess the next step is to you're probably going to start using unmaking orbs and respecting your atlas passive tree to start targeting the next thing that you really need to uh, go after say you're looking for a specific ritual base helmet and you're going to need to invest in some ritual nodes for more ritual chance because you're trying to speed that up the biggest tip i can give you with regards to betrayal is to instead of using chimeria to farm sulfite scarabs always try and put chimeria in research every single time because chimeria in research gives you unmaking orbs and i believe you can use uh either the Eater or Exarch Altars, I'm not sure which, to farm Unmaking Orbs, but you can't do that early in the league. So you need to get Unmaking Orbs so that you can start to push into a more optimized Atlas passive tree and go after the things that you need, like how this one is completely spec to Breach. If I want to change this from Breach to even harvest, which is fairly close to a lot of these things, it's gonna take me like 30 unmaking orbs to unspec all of those notes. That is a lot of unmaking orbs and you have to farm all of those yourself in solo self found. So you can also purchase unmaking orbs from Kirak here for two regret orbs each, but regret orbs also might be valuable if you are respecking and changing your character a lot or making lots of different builds. So maybe this isn't the way you want to go about it. Now, if you look at my currency stash from Crucible League, I have lots of regret orbs. I could do that. And I pick up lots of chance orbs for this exact reason. So that if I need to, I can upgrade these into scourings. I can upgrade those into regrets and I can upgrade those into unmakings or as needed. And in my experience, I wind up using more of the scouring orbs uh, instead of using chaos orbs to roll maps. I will scour out them and I wind up using lots of scouring orbs in that process. But that, that is kind of the entry approach I would throw at you there. And so now I'm going to start talking about other types of league content. So first is Alva. Alva is very useful, um, especially if you're trying to farm a double corrupt altar 
or try target farm for unique from upgrading and getting the vials. So there's something to consider here is that you're going to need Alva missions, of course. Um, but there is this node on the tree uh, called Artifacts of the Vol. Your maps with incursions always have four incursions. Now, this is good in some circumstances and bad in others. So... If you have four incursions in your map, you're only going to get three chances to upgrade a room to its max tier. So if you're trying to upgrade rooms to tier three across your incursion temple, you do not want to take this note. But if you're trying to farm a vial off of the boss, this node saves you a master mission every time you make a temple. So if you're trying to get double corrupts, you do not want to take this node because you're trying to upgrade the rooms and you want to have four chances to upgrade that corruption chamber room to tier three. And this will only give you three chances at doing so because it's going to only offer you to upgrade one room in each map. So you're not going to be able to upgrade the same room twice in the same map, essentially is the point there so that is something to consider when going for alva and it can be very grindy and the oils or the the vials can be very rare so that is something to consider as well but the same thing kind of goes for einhar you can you can run your einhar missions and yeah you're gonna get beasts and whatnot but you probably want to fully invest right in Einhar stuff. So right off the bat you're probably just gonna want to start banking a lot of these missions same with um delve you don't want to go get sulfite and not be getting the most for your mission so a chance for yellow beast to be replaced with red beast you probably want that if you're trying to target farm a specific unique bow like i was maybe you want to definitely spec into the hunt for finimus because the goliath beast is the phenomenal beast and that's the one that gives you a bow so if you have this node spec you're going to have extra chance of getting that red beast so that you can target farm your bow or uh, other types here. And you can know that by hovering over these. So this is a ferric flame hellion, a ferric chieftain. So if you're trying to farm a piece of jewelry, ring, amulet, or belt, these are all ferric. So you want to have the hunt for feral if you're trying to get the unique from one of these beasts. Right. So then you have a Sakoween Wretch, Enuma Widow, so Kraisic Watcher. So those attach to all of these nodes here, and you can specify that as well as trying to target farm for the beasts to open the portals to if you want a feral's fur, you need to have the hunt for feral. You need to have more rare beasts. You want to have extra chance for red beasts, and you want to be up here you want to have your maps with einhar missions have a chance to contain additional packs of beasts instead of other monsters so you want all of these things to really invest in that and that's why unmaking orbs are really important and you kind of have to start like banking content so that you can throw down on that content when you are most effectively specced into it so that's a reason i start early with the operative strong boxes to start building scarabs so if if i'm looking at my fragment stash tab from crucible league you can kind of see in here what content i farmed and what content i didn't i didn't do anything with sulfide i didn't do much in delve i didn't do much with breach i have a lot of these stacked up but if you're looking at this okay i did a lot with harbinger i did i don't think i farmed abyss i believe i there's a recipe with horizon orbs you can convert them into others but you can also up upgrade them now as well so you can do different things here you can upgrade them or you can convert them into others so it looks like the recipe is five so you convert 10 rusted scarabs into other rusted scarabs two to one with orb of horizons and those gave me rusted bestiary scarabs so just there i converted all of those abyss scarabs into bestiary scarabs so i farmed lots of reliquary i did lots of like unique target farm stuff i farmed lots of div cards i used elder scarabs to put more enemies in maps while i was farming reliquary scarabs i did a lot of expedition farming for a while and each one of those avenues you go down you have to kind of reorient your atlas passive tree to give you the best chance for those things you don't want to use your scarabs if you're not getting the most out of your expeditions right so you you really have to plan a lot and be ready to make a jump into specializing in a new piece of content so unmaking orbs unmaking orbs like you got to use them smartly and try and get them 
everywhere you can. So other early league considerations I'll throw out is that Abyss, if you want a Stygian Vise, you have to farm an Abyss and you have to go get one, right? If you if you want the Stygian Vise belt. But you also might want a higher item level one, so you might not want to push into that till later. But oils as well are very valuable. So early on, you might get a couple oils, but you, you might not be able to get the oils you need for the ideal deal anoint for your amulet but you can then have some oils to anoint something on it to give you more power going forward now i would say the next most valuable currency in solo self founds to unmakings i mean aside from divines and exalts annulments the really rare ones is fusings fusings are life i would say um you find a unique item that you want to six link what if you run out of fusings so something that I'm doing the entire league long is I am banking fusings in every way possible. Every single six socket that drops on the ground, I'm picking it up and I wind up with dump tabs that just like are filled with six sockets. And then I will convert those into jewelers, upgrade them in the fusings. And so if I got this Feral's Fur, for example, I want to make a build around that, but I need to get it six link and I could go into betrayal and use hillock and try and upgrade the quality on it but if you don't have that option readily available to you at the moment you might be stuck trying to link a 20 percent quality item which can take a lot of fusings you can get really unlucky i could spend like 4,000 fusings and not link that item so in my opinion you can never get enough fusings in solo self out and getting that first six link might be a pretty big struggle so Something that I definitely do early in the league as well is I will also get tamper proof. I will make strong boxes in my maps corrupted. And this gives them a chance to drop corrupted six links items. That could be the six link that's useful for you, but that also could just be 20 board fusings for you. And early on, I will also do vol side areas. Uh, enemies in vol side areas have a drop chance to drop corrupted items and so getting these corrupted items can get you corrupted six links and things to get you going in the league or get you the fusings that you need to push on now in terms of fusings the best way to get fusings is via tujin um, without a doubt every single time you refresh this you should always buy the fusings always buy the jeweler's orbs no matter what range they're in yes you can get chaos orbs but chaos orbs in my opinion are not near as valuable as the fusings are so i refresh this it doesn't matter like i am going and i'm getting these fusings no matter what every single time and if i need more of this currency i will go farm more expeditions but like I already just got 15 fusings there that's a good way to go about it now you can also use the crafting bench to get a six link it costs 1500 fusings it's going to take you a long time to bank all those up but you can also get the five link recipe there as well that's something you can do that's something i never tend to do as i generally want to link things myself because over the course of time uh i believe on a 20 percent quality item it averages 1100 fusings instead of the 1500 to force but six link the item so next let's talk about heist heist is extremely important in solo cell found now that is because in the blueprints you can get things in every single one of these that you cannot get in any other place in the game. So these enchanted armaments blueprints can give you very well rolled items, can give you six links, and can just like be the thing that just like completely elevates your character. So these enchanted armaments blueprints are super valuable. But then there's the blueprints with replicas or experimented items. You can only get those through running these blueprints. The same thing with alternate quality gems. If you want alt quality gems in Trade League, sure, you can never run a heist. You can go on trade and buy it. But in Solo Selfbound, you need these blueprints, right, to go get the alt quality gems. So one of the things I would recommend is never take this node, ever. Always be on the lookout for blueprints 
always be stacking up contracts to run and maybe even if you're going to be playing in solo self-found for a long time you might even make a character dedicated to speed running heists which um i won't go into a full character thing there but basically get yourself a queen of the forest make a raider and you get as much speed as possible basically that that is the goal and how to make like the fastest heisting character so you might want to do that specifically for heist so the next big things to talk about are storage and like what to loot right so early on in the league i'm picking up like every pair of boots that drops rare and maybe gloves until i start getting a character geared like all the jewelry everything uh to like start getting my character geared but as the league goes on i start refining what i'm picking up more and more so eventually by the end of the league i am only looting items of the top tier bases like what's in this stash tab nightmare bassinets dragon scale boots titanium spirit shields murder mitts all of this but even to the level that i only pick up those rare items after a point if they are max rolled on the base uh, armor roll, for example, on these Titan gauntlets. So that rolls from 242 to 278. So that greatly restricts the number of rare items I pick up. But this also gives me, in my case, at the end of the league, I have a full stash tab of max rolled high level base items that I could potentially use to craft on every single piece of gear. So I have this Vol Regalia that I crafted for this character has a max roll 197 energy shield before I even start to craft it okay now if you're going to craft a piece of gear that is on a base type this is where perfect fossils are extremely extremely valuable so this is how i got the quality on this to 29 percent that makes it easier to six link and then gets the most energy shield or armor or evasion rating out of that piece of gear so that is the biggest use for me uh, of fossils is the thing I'm looking for the most is perfect fossils to like craft this gear. And there's a lot of different ways you can craft gear. You can use essences, you can use fossils, you can use the crafting bench, you could pick up items off the ground, you can use harvest crafting, you can even try and gamble with ROG and get good items here as well. There's lots of different ways you can go about crafting things and it, it kind of varies differing on what you're trying to do a thing i would recommend that if you're going to try and fossil craft anything this is like the main use i have of craft of exile website is that i will pick my item say it's going to be a, a helmet and i want plus minion gems and intelligence right and then i will click this fossil button here and I can compute the best selection of fossils to roll the item that I want on that item. So, and you can change this from one, two, three socket resonators. So if I want plus two minion gems and intelligence on a helmet, the best way to get that is going to be with this fossil combination, faceted fundamental sanctified. I might not have those. So maybe I look at the next one, bound fossils, fundamental fossils, sanctified fossils. And this is probably more accessible because because faceted fossils are really rare but if you were to purchase all the fossils in trade league uh it shows you like the cost in chaos for the fossils that you use so maybe you don't have a sanctified fossil maybe your best chance is to use bound plus dense plus pristine and i use this tool a lot to try and target fossils for uh, a specific crafting project but if i'm being completely honest most of the items i use i pick up off the ground or i craft with harvest craft crafting or in other cases I have a fractured base like this item now looking for fractured items is also something that's really important to do um, this dropped for me it, it came with t1 fractured energy shield on the hubris circlet so then I would use my perfect fossils and then I would target something else on it and maybe use an essence to craft this but trying to craft something crazier like this crusader ring that i want to get cursed enemies with conductivity a situation like this better suits itself to using the fossils so i try and target the fossils using craft of exile and give myself the best chance to hit those things on the item a very valuable tool this website all right so where was i here yeah i eventually scale my looting up so that I'm only picking up the max roll armor values on bases. Now it's good in some cases and better in others. So the evasion rating base has a larger roll of values 
than, say, a hubris circlet. This is only a range of 12. So you're going to find a lot more max roll hubris circlets than you do max roll lion pelts or a mirrored spike shield, for example. So some items might be harder to get using that thing. That's why there's lots of sork gloves in here because those are easier to find with the max rolled implicit. But all league long, I'm I'm looking for and trying to store bases, like picking up fractured things, like T2 fizz damage on a siege axe. I didn't play a melee build last league, but I have this. I have it stored in my stash in case I I find things to want to go down that avenue. It's here. I have that, and in trade league, you could just sell it, but here you need to store it, which brings me to the next big thing I want to talk about is storage. Now, I, I've kind of set my stash tab up here. This is pretty much my stash tab from Crucible League. I have my currency tab. I have nine quad tabs that I use for things. Eventually, I only had like three or four left over that I could like use as dump tabs. Like I have unique item overflow here. I have unique items here and here and here because you can't store duplicates of unique items in the unique stash tab and you might want to be saving items like I was picking up all these Tanu Ahi gloves so that maybe if I needed to corrupt them I could so I, I've got extra Agnarod staves so if I need to make the Vintar square map I can do that and it, in Crucible League it was even more because I was picking up Sire Shards in case I want to try and get a Crucible tree on a Sire of Shards you need space to store all of these items so this is definitely something you have to consider playing in SSF you might need more stash tabs than you would in trade league in trade league you can get away with just your basic div card essences fossils catalysts you know like all your basic tabs and then maybe you have a like a quad tab that you use to sell things and you really don't need much more because you're not trying to like gear every character in the game essentially at once maybe or do all of these different things but there's a lot more that i i'm storing here like i have fragments I have tabs dedicated to like building this character was the CI character. This was uh, this was my CI tab as I was trying to like collect things to put in here that might go on the character because I'm trying to gear it before I make the character so that I get it to maps and it has gear. But I have the tabs for the shafts build and I have a tab for the mana build that had different mana stuff on it. All these things I did last league and I wind up just storing lots of different stuff like here. I, I needed an overflow for all these brooches that I was trying to craft for heist. Like, I have a six-link Dialis that I wound up never using because I didn't find the right build for it or find the right need for that item. But there's a lot of other things, like, I'm storing here. I have a tab for all of my incubators. I have a tab that, like, is my generic dump for quality gems. I'm always picking up quality gems and solo self found because I can fill my inventory with these quality gems and then vendor them and get gem cousin's prisms, which might be something you need. This might be a strategy you consider to get your GCPs to flip your gems or quality gems up, right? So I'm always picking up quality gems. I start off the league picking up all the quality of gems. But then after a while, I only pick up quality gems that are at least quality of 10. So no matter what, every four gems I put in the vendor will give me a gem cutter's prism. But then it even gets more crazy because I start storing 20 quality gems. So here is my cluster jewel overflow with all of the alt quality gems I farmed last league. Like these are really hard to get. So you gotta you gotta have a place to put them. And yes, there's a gem tab, but I don't like just, I like having separation between some of these things. Now, this tab is all quality 20 gems. In case I'm leveling a new character, I will search this tab for, oh, I maybe I want 20 quality frost blades to like level through the campaign. But then I have the tab of all level 21 gems. So maybe in here, oh, I dropped a level 21 ice spear. Hmm, that seems really good. And maybe I should make a new character based around the level 21 ice spear. So then I start trying to like gear a character around that or the 2120 pyroclast mine. Like these just drop and I don't want to just vendor this, right? A 2120 pyroclast mine is not something you just have so you could make an entire build around this one gym so i have this whole stash of level 21 and level 20 gyms that just dropped and i need place to store those i have extra storage for vol gyms and this is where i have the extra 
enhance and uh, I wound up getting a lot of enhances. And while I'm here, I will mention the best way to level these exceptional support gems. So something you definitely want to be looking for in the league uh, with veiled items, you're looking for a Haku unveil that gives increased quality of socketed gems like on this shield, plus 10% quality socketed gems. The quality on these gems causes them to gain increased experience. But if then in the alternate weapon slot, if you put this in here, you're getting an extra 10% quality on the gem. So it's going to then gain 150% increased XP. So that is definitely something to be looking out for. Um, you want to get the actual item that drops that is veiled because if I were to just craft the quality of socketed gems like I could do on this bow that has all white sockets, which is another good thing for offhand leveling, I could go to the bench, craft quality of socketed gems. It costs an exalt and it only goes up to 8%. So that shield, if I can fit that on my offhand, that is my best chance to level uh, these exceptional gems. Whether it's the Enhance, Enlighten, Empower, they're, they're all very valuable and you're going to want to level those and it takes a lot of time to do so. So you have to, or you should try and do that the most efficiently possible. And that is definitely with this quality of socketed gems that you can get from a veiled item that only can drop from Haku. Further going on, I've got my flask dump. There's also a flask tab that I do not have. Um, I don't like how unique flasks dump in this. I, I wish they still went to my unique tab, but something I'm always trying to do, uh, I've, I've got some fractured flask bases and I'm trying to store up high item level flasks of all the different types in case I need to craft a specific flask for any kind of reason. I have a bunch of options because flasks can hit something good but not exactly what you want so then you might want to roll it on another flask so you might need a lot of extra bases so you need space to store those as i did here with all of these item bases and whatnot but i've also done the same this is all influenced gear all shaper elder conqueror influenced gear i guess I, i'm storing all of these bases just in case there might be something that i need to craft with it right and i've got more bases here um cerulean rings iolite rings these, these things that are more rare fractured stuff that i could potentially craft on later so like like this is pretty much just a fractured and synthesized item dump just in case i find something like and i'm only saving the good stuff here like the royal berg with t1 max life regen extra there uh T2 crit chance on Imperial Claw. Like that is something you could work around and potentially make a really powerful thing. So I've got all these crazy items in here that I could potentially craft things with and you never know what your next build might be based on the things you get. So it might be worth to hold on to a lot of this stuff. So storage gets to be pretty important. Here's where I have all my high level Stygian visors that I banked up. I got a tab specifically for six links. Like after, like see, I grabbed this six link right here. It's corrupted, but it has life on it like it's probably worth saving this is probably one of the uh, potentially first six links i found and if i if it has the right colors on it i could use it but you could also farm some beyond right and maybe you can change the colors on this by using the tainted chromatic orbs right so like getting that six link like however you get it if it's corrupted that's fine you there there are ways to make it work and like this could have been the sixth link that like pushed me in got me into the league what else do i got here i have a massive storage of jewels i pick up all of the rare jewels and i will dump them in here and you'll notice as i'm mousing over a lot of these a lot of these have been corrupted and this is something that now in the current state of the game is pretty important because jewels like unique jewels are extremely rare and a lot of them are corruption only so i wound up storing a bunch of jewels like for all different types like maybe i want to make a crit multi build and i need specific resistances on it like i have it here and i can just search through these tabs to try and find a specific jewel i need but then i went through and i corrupted a bunch of them so that i can get unique jewels all all of these jewels came from corrupting the jewels in those taps souls wick some of these are more specific like the golden rule i i got the spectral shield throw jewel from that as well but some of them are pretty bad you can get some garbage ones but that is the only way to get these jewels is by corrupting jewels 
So that is one of the best uses of Vol Orbs and why I have so many jewels stored here because I wound up corrupting a bunch of them um, trying to target farm a specific jewel. But I also have a storage tab for Abyss Jewels. There's so many things that can roll on these. All of them are high item level and those would be the best ones worth keeping. If I need to start crafting a jewel, I have bases for those. Cluster Jewels. In Solo Cell Found, you should pick up every single cluster jewel you find and even the bad ones. So let me show you why here. I'm going to pull out some 9, 10, 11 passive jewels here and I can vendor these and re-roll them. So if all of these jewels are the same rarity, uh, two of these are white and three of them are magic. So I'm going to make the other two magic and say these are all bad jewels. I can vendor them all and I get a new jewel. And this one is an eight passive minion damage jewel. That could be huge. So like that, that's crazy. Like, and one of the biggest reasons to pick up all of these jewels. Um, I probably, I don't even know if I found an eight passive minion jewel in the league, but if I pick up all of the large cluster jewels, I can get rid of the ones I don't need and then try and target the ones that I do need. And that goes for the small clusters. It goes for the medium clusters. Um, it gives you a better chance to target farm the jewels you're looking for because there's such a wide range on these that it can be hard to get the exact one you need, let alone getting it rolled. So that's something you have to figure out as well. But then I have some storage for heist gear as I was finding the best gear and I wound up storing a bunch of extra disguise kits in case I merged to trade league and wanted something to sell. I have all of that. I have stash tabs that are storing well rolled items like this shield has big life on it has decent evasion rating on it um maybe there's something i could build around that this one has life and really good attack speed on it what about these gloves t1 life t1 flat fizz with int and dexterity like maybe there's something there big damage claw there's one of the best ones i found there's t1 attack speed on this i could make a solid build using that and but i would say one of the biggest things to always be looting is amulets Amulets have one of the biggest mod pools of any items in the game. So something that I'm definitely doing a lot of, as you can see across here, I'm looting amulets. And one of the big things I'm looking for when I'm identifying these amulets is plus one level of gems. And here's the cold one. I've got a bunch of these stored in another tab, but I have all of these decently rolled amulets. So that maybe they fit into my next build, right? But if you're playing any kind of spell build, your amulet absolutely has plus one to whatever damage type you're looking for. So I stored a bunch of these here. Plus one lightning gems, plus one lightning gems. But it, it might also not roll good. So it's plus one chaos with spell damage attack speed accuracy a little bit of cold res there's no life on this there's no spot for life on this so like you you might not always get something good but you want to be on the lookout for those because this not perfect plus one fire gems amulet could be the first one that i got the league it it might be my best chance at pushing damage, getting me to that next level on my character. So definitely something to grab there. And I, I never stop looting amulets. I'm always looking for more amulets just in case they hit something crazy as this one did. I picked this amulet up off the ground. Plus one all gems. It had lots of intelligence on it, which helps me scale my energy shield on this build. If you're looking at this ring, like you might think that's not that amazing, but this wound up like being a key piece in a build I leveled to 100. Like that's that's SSF. You never know what weird things are going to happen. So then I had two more tabs down here. I have a tab to store helm enchants that like I picked up off the ground or when I was farming lab, I, I grabbed a helm enchant. It's like, oh, maybe that could be a thing that I build around. Additional wave and seismic trap. Ooh, that could be really good. Extra plague bearer dot multi oh that's good like th there's there's so many things that could potentially lead you to an, the next build tornado shot fires additional projectile that's really good so it's it's worth to have some of those i had a tab specifically for unique rings and this tab i would pull from in case i needed to make a lore weave that's what happens when you vendor a full inventory of unique rings you get a specific chest for that. And then I had a couple extra tabs left over that I was storing crucible trees that might have something worth doing. But that is a lot of stash tabs. That is a lot of investment into the game. And like I was mentioning, you just might, you might need more stash tabs and solo self-found. 
than you do in trade. All right? That's one of the big things I wanted to hit on here uh, is there, there's a little bit more of a financial requirement to have a really long sustained journey through solo cell found. Like it took me 60 days of playing, like at least eight hours, 60 days of playing to fill all these tabs up. Like by the very end of the league, I was just getting to the point where I was filling all this up. So it takes a while. You don't need as much space if you're not hoarding as much stuff as I do. But I'm going through the league thinking I, I'm going to build all these different characters and I never know what it's going to be. So I'm just grabbing all this stuff. All these replica items, you can only get these from Heist. So it's like the only chance. Oh, this is a six link staff that I got from heist so much stuff only comes from heist and while i'm thinking about it six link here there's one in here for sure yeah here this item came with the enchant all sockets linked it might not have came six linked but all i have to do is six socket this and it becomes linked i got this from heist there's there's a couple of those that i've i've grabbed but this one right here this i picked up from heist already six linked this one right here increased uh, explicit Fizz mods came six linked. Like you can get really, really big things out of heist. Definitely do not sleep on heist in solo self found without a doubt. So lastly here, last little thing I will mention is kind of what I was talking about at the very beginning of the video where how a, a single unique item can drop and you look at that and think, hmm, maybe I can make a build around that. So lastly, one of the first things I got was uh, I ended up with the six link, the coming calamity. And I wound up trying to make this Herald bow build, right? Because this dropped. But you might drop this pair of Harim Soros. In normal league, you'll price check it. Oh, it's one chaos. Maybe not even pick it up off the ground. But in SSF, this converts all the fizz damage to skills to cold damage. This is how you convert um, Blade Vortex to do cold damage, for example. This could be your build. Uh, maybe you drop a pair of Azanath's Touch. Curse with Tim Chains, explode enemies. Hmm, maybe I build around that. Y you get a Rhyme Gaze. I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I make a cold dot build because an item drop, like a carcass jack or red blade banner, which investment into strong boxes might be your best way at acquiring one of these. Uh, but even a trimmer rod or a searing touch, call to brotherhood, like all, all of these items just like you drop it. And instead of looking at it and saying, oh, how much is it worth? You might think, oh, what can I use this for to make another build? And that is one of my favorite things about playing in solo self out is like, I got a Shavs drop last league and I, I made a Shavs build. I got an Arcali's Fang. Maybe I'd try to build around that. But then there are these unique jewels, the Storm Shroud, Fire Song. These are extremely rare. All of, all of these jewels, if these are not corrupted jewels, you have to find a way to get these and they're extremely rare. Uh, most of the primordial jewels will come from div cards and maps with golem bosses, for example. But it doesn't stop here. Like you then push it to the next level. You go after bosses. You go kill Shaper. You get a ruby, uh, a dying sun flask. This is something you might, you might not farm Shaper and get this in Trade League, but if you want one in Solo Self Found, you have to go kill Shaper and you have to get it. You go kill Cirrus. You get a Thread of Hope that opens up lots of different things potentially, or maybe the Burden of Truth. Uh, you want a Hollow Palm Jewel? You have to farm Delirium and you have to get it to drop off of one of the Delirium bosses in the Delirium, right? You go farm Maven, you kill her, you get the Legacy of Fury boots. These are insane boots. You can make a whole new build around that. But even even crazier is the Watcher's Eyes. You just look at this Watcher's Eye. Fizz damage taken from hits as fire while affected by purity of elements. Recover many. Oh, oh, well, that one's not super great. But no matter what, it's like, hmm, do I have a character in SSF that's using purity of elements? Like, I only got like eight. Watcher's Eye Jewels all of last week because I've, I farmed so much of div cards trying to farm a Lionized Bow, I didn't focus on it. But one of these Watcher's Eyes could be the thing that leads you to your next build that can like really elevate a build to the next level. But you can't just go to trade and buy it. You have to get it to drop and then it can it has rolls. Hunter's Exalted Orb. This is the only Conqueror Exalt I found all of last league. Only one. So like there's things that are just super, super rare that it, it can be really exciting to get that wouldn't hold that weight in trade league. Timeless jewels. You can't go on trade and find the perfect jewel for the jewel socket that you found on POB. Uh, another thing to consider early on in the league, if you can kill Adziri, you can get insanely useful belts off of killing Adziri as well as flask for your 
chaos res and damage that's definitely something to consider early uh, portal gym is something that i use on almost every one of my characters if you really want to make sure you get one of these you farm breach early in the league you get the realm cards you get yourself a portal gym so that you can have yourself a cast on death portal and you don't have to worry as much about picking up portals and throwing down portals before bosses and rerunning through a whole map it winds up saving you a lot of time and whatnot it, it's it's quite a rabbit hole and it really tests your game knowledge way more than playing in trade league does because you kind of have to approach it from all angles like you might play in trade league and like i never want to farm metamorphs and then you never do but if you want catalysts and ssf you have to do it so you have to be able to like conquer all the content and the satisfaction when you do so is just all the greater so i i've talked about all the things on my on my bullet points on my list um I hope this video helped you out if you're trying to get into solo self found uh, definitely ask questions in the comments if you uh would like to know anything else i'll do my best to answer them or join my discord that is a great place to ask questions as well there's a bunch of us in there but that is going to be all for this one i'd like to thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video definitely hit the like button as it really helps the channel out a lot subscribe make sure you don't miss more videos from me if you'd like to help support my channel please consider using the super thanks the heart icon just below the video or by joining to become a member and i'll see you all in trial of the ancestors cheers